And joining us now with more on the challenges of forming the 21st Knesset Coalition is political analyst and chairman of the Oz Zionist Foundation, Zohar Tal. Zohar, thank you so much for coming in today. Here. All right, so oh. my first question to you is, uh, with respect to the coalition and forming the coalition, mm -hmm. uh, something we said actually in the previous uh, article, which, I, which I'm not sure is correct, that Rivlin could force a coalition uh, between Netanyahu's Likud and Gantz Lapid's Blue and White Party. Now, that's, that's not exactly true, Yeah, is it? well, legally he cannot force anything. He can only uh, give the role of, uh, of prime minister, uh, the role of a uh, coalition forming, to a, a specific Knesset member. Uh, it will be Netanyahu, definitely. And uh, if Netanyahu does not succeed, Rivlin uh, can, can nominate another uh, mm -hmm. Knesset member in order to do that, but he cannot actually force them to form a coalition. Uh, that will be up to the negotiation of Likud uh, members. So, so, what do you, so what do you think would be more likely then in the event that, say, Avigdor Lieberman pulls his party out of coalition, in, in which case the right wing would not have enough... Uh, seats to, to form a coalition. Do you think mm -hmm. it's more likely that the Likud, in efforts to retain prim the prime minister's portfolio, will mm -hmm. invite blue and white or another left-wing party into the coalition? Or do you think it's more likely that all of the left-wing opposition parties will say, there's no way, we'd rather go to election? Yeah, well, well definitely that is the nightmare of the uh, negotiators from the Likud party. You've, you've seen just the, the happiness and the, and the joyfulness of the Likud members on election night. And then they were much more serious when they came to uh, sure. President Rivlin. Uh, they a lot and of much more concerns. Much more concerned. So, uh, so definitely, uh, they, they they are uh, in a difficult position. I think that negotiations will take till the last minute. But I think that eventually, all right wing parties want to form a coalition and be in the coalition. I don't think it will go into the direction of a unity government. Not at this point, at least. I see. All right. So. Let, let's talk about some of the other major kind of crises, you could call it, that, that mm -hmm. the coalition, um, even before forming, is facing. Uh, right. And first and foremost is the Haredi draft bill, uh -huh. which is one of the reasons we called for early elections to begin with. Yeah. Uh, there was also, uh, let's see, the, the so-called French law, which would mm -hmm. protect uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu from, uh, from indictments uh, while he's serving as prime minister. Mm -hmm. so, where, where do you see where do you see these uh, issues progressing in the near future? How do how do you see them progressing? Yeah. So, so first of all, with regards uh, to the main issue, which is uh, the uh, the military service bill, um, there is currently no formula on the table. So uh, I've discussed the issue with with the several parties, and none of them want to start negotiating anything. They really uh, they are keeping the cards very close to the chest. Uh, and and the, the, it will take a lot of goodwill from both sides in order to mm -hmm. form something uh, that they can both uh, both sides live with. I mean, both sides, the ultra orthodox and Lieberman, which are the the main poles in the, in sure. this issue. Um, with regards to the French law, it's interesting because uh, senior Likud officials. Uh, are saying that the French law currently is off the table. It's yeah. not going to be an issue, it's not going to be discussed, it's not going to be uh, some kind of demand from Likud uh, side. Why, why not? Because I thought that was going to be, you know, one of the major, I, not just myself, but a lot uh -huh. of people are expecting that to be really one of the biggest uh, pushes from the Likud and, and his and Netanyahu supporters. Right. So, so currently they feel that uh, when it gets to a hearing, uh, most of the allegations will be dissolved and maybe not even a trial. Maybe something which is very minor. Mm. Uh, so, so they don't want to bring it up. They they are not putting it on the table and they are really focusing on uh, bridging the gaps between the Haredim and the Lieberman at this point. Let's see. All right, and so I guess for my final question, you know, what, what are some of the other biggest issues then facing the coalition and, and forming of that coalition? Because again, you know, with the, with the credit conscription mm -hmm. bill, for example, going back to that, mm -hmm. you know, you mentioned that, uh, that, that, that there's no plan, no formal agreement or, or you know, I, potential agreement even on the table, mm -hmm. but that's a major issue that needs to be addressed. And if the right wing is to form a coalition, that includes Shas uh -huh. and UTJ, which yeah. <laughs> command a great deal of seats at this in, in this new Knesset, mm -hmm. uh, and I sincerely doubt that they would be uh, <laughs> you know, happy with any changes. Uh, yeah, well, I think that eventually, um, you know, th there is a bill that was formulated on the last Knesset, 
Uh, I think that eventually uh, the, the agreement will be more or less on the same guidelines uh, of that bill that was not eventually legislated. That there would be kind of punitive financial issues for any mm -hmm. uh, kind of yeshiva that doesn't send yes, over people. something the along these lines. No one mm -hmm. would say it at this point, but I think that's the end game. Sure. Uh, and in the meantime, I think that uh, we'll all see that, uh, well, as you know, uh, Israel uh, landed, uh, reached the moon last week, and, sure. we, and we will definitely see that reaching the moon is easier than forming a coalition. All right, well, with that, uh, unfortunately, I hope you're wrong. <laughs> um, but uh, Zoal, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.